So I'm here today with Howard Drakeup for his second episode on running your stories. Um, particularly excited to catch up with with Howard today after you absolutely smashed the uh, the Steve Parr round or the uh, the Lakeland um, 2500s, uh, whichever. I, I, I see two names for it kicking around. Yeah, there's, it's a bit. It confuses me a little bit. Um, I think the difference is there's. When Steve Parr did the original round, I think he did 61 tops. And then as things have gone by, I think it's evolved into there's now 62 tops. But I think Steve Parr created the original round. Yeah, that seems to be the round that's listed on the Bob Graham website. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's the one we'll, we'll recognise. Yes, I think, I think it's a good thing to call it the Steve Parr round because obviously... Um, he, 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 yeah, I think he, out, out of respect, yeah, I think we should call it the Steve Parr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause he created the route, set the record in 1984, so it's, yeah. it stood for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I always remember that it's 35 years because that's the year I was born. <laughs> oh. Well, I was a little top hole, he was, um, <laughs> yeah, you, you young, young person, you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were younger than me, Howard, I didn't realize you were that much younger. <laughs> Well, I'm 36 in a couple of days, so getting older. <laughs> yeah, yeah, getting older. I've got a few years on you. Cool. So, yeah, um, where do we start? You were in training for the UTS. Maybe we'll start there. Yeah. So, yeah, we're training for UTS 165. Um, that was going really well. Um, I put... I, I, I put I, put a lot into training for that um a hell of a lot of training and then it got cancelled and i was like really gutted for like 30 minutes and then after that it kind of like i just thought oh well it's, no, it's not the end of the world there's plenty more things that, that i have actually wanted to do well i've been training for uts there's so many things you can do out there at the minute yes uh, you see people achieving bigger and better things every single weekend and you think Oh, if I were training for this, then I could be doing that. And then when UTS got cancelled, it was like, I won't say like a bit of a relief, but obviously I was like disappointed. And then I thought, well, straight away, I thought, well, there's, what, what, what do I do next? I'm excited again. You know, there's this new excitement. So I made a little Instagram post saying, what, what do I do next? Do I do a Bob Graham? Do I do a, pad, a Paddy? Do I do a, um, a Ramsey? Um, you know, the... The options were limitless. Yeah. A guy called Paul Wilson um, messaged me back saying, why don't you do the, the Steve Power round? And I seen Paul uh, achieve that a couple, of, a couple of months ago. And I thought, what an absolute beast that man is, you know, doing that. 45,000 feet of elevation in, you know, in a, just, just over 100 miles. I thought, that, that's tough. And I had a lot of respect for Paul for doing that. And um, as soon as he said it to me, I thought, you know, it ticks all the right boxes. It's got just a little bit more mileage <clears throat> and a couple of hundred, a couple of thousand more meters of ascent. I thought, why not go a little bit harder? You know, I, I do like a challenge, and uh, that, that's that's how I got onto doing the round. Cool. So, j just before we get in, into the round, because um, I, I know lots of people are are interested in this kind of stuff. You, you said you were really training hard for UTS. So what did your, I don't know, typical training week or something, what, what does that look like for you? Um, in a nutshell, um, Monday, rest day. Tuesday, a workout of some description. Um, no longer than an hour to an hour and a quarter. Wednesday, an easy run. Then again, no longer than an hour. We go off time. Um, we used to do it in my, I saw my, my coach, Margarita, um, Fitness Lab PT. When I first started with Margarita, it, on my training plan, it was always miles. Uh, and then we changed the time. And I think time, time's better because if you've had a, a crappy day at work or whatever, and you know, your training plan says 50 miles, it's like, and you know, you, you can sometimes do yourself more harm than good at attaining that 15 miles. Whereas if she puts two hours, it's two hours. I can do maybe 15 miles or I can do 12 miles. So going back to the question, Wednesday is an easy run for one hour time. Thursday is another uh, workout of some description, a different workout to 
Tuesday's workout. You know, it could be a hill, some sort of a hill session, or it could be just some sort of an interval session. Um, Friday, a rest day. Saturday, long run day. And then the long run can vary mile, uh, mileage depending on what I'm doing or what part of the training plan I'm up, uh, like where I'm up to. Um, so Saturday, predominantly a long run day. And Sunday, then again, it's a longish run day, but it's like an easier long run day, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's shorter than Saturday. Or well, sometimes if I've had a really, really long, um, quite intense long Saturday long run, Sunday will be an easier run. So it's quite a lot of easy runs yeah. and much more than an hour during the week. You know, nothing hard and fast, really. Yeah. So I've got, I follow you on Strava, obviously. Um because we've known each other a while, and um, I know that you clock up a fair bit of elevation during your training. I love the elevation, <laughs> my favourite bit, yeah. When I do a run, um, I always, when I'm plotting a route, I always, yeah, I'm, I'm not shy of, 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 of adding in an extra hill. <laughs> <laughs> All the hills. Yeah, because, yeah, I, I, I like to think I put in a, a decent amount of elevation, and I look at yours, and it, it'll be double what I've done in a month kind of thing and this this one oh, Huddersfield doesn't have these mountains does it like, no it's, uh, that's the thing now, now that you're up in the lakes it's a bit uh, you've got a bit of an advantage for, for getting up on the, the, getting the ascent in definitely and uh, you, did you have a, a some training time out in the Alps as well yeah and that was just like pure luck but it, it, it kind of tied in with training for UTS um we have friends that live over there and they have a cat and when they go on holiday, the cat needs looking after. So we're like, we'll look after the cat. <laughs> yeah, I can look after a cat if, if they're short of someone. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think it was maybe five, four to five, we four weeks before UTS. I was over in Chamonix. It was just when um, the restrictions got put down on, on, um, do they call it a travel corridor? Basically, when yeah. you if you go over to uh, France, when you come home, you have to quarantine for two weeks. So we just got out there. We, we flew via Amsterdam. And when we got to Amsterdam, they made the, the announcement. And we was like, well, it's too late to kind of go home now. Let's just let's just enjoy the holiday, the training, and then um, worry about the quarantine when we get home. So, yeah, so we had a week over in the Alps. Um, apps, I mean, I've, I've been to Chamonix in winter time couldn't do much um running because of like obviously the depth the depth of the snow it's just you, you yeah. know you can't really run. did a bit of snowshoeing over there in in february which was awesome and then when we went back recently all the tourists i think it was utmb week or the week leading up to it so it would have been absolutely hammered yeah but because of the the announcement they'd all scarpered and we literally just had it was just us and the locals, really. Um, so I had the trails all to myself. Oh, and it was amazing, absolutely amazing. And I mean, with regards to training, when I was over there, I didn't really feel the elevation. Um, most runs, like you start at about a thousand meters anyway, which you, you, you can't really feel that. And then when I'd made the initial climb out of Sham, whichever way I decided to go, I'd always hit 2,000 and above. Yeah. And then I kind of like run along on like a plateau between two and two, five, didn't really, I thought I didn't feel it. Um, there was one time where I did feel it and I felt a bit like, I think it's because it was a, uh, it was like quite a hot day. And I made sure that I'd always climb out a sham, drop down a valley, climb up another, you know, obviously try to tie in a hell of a lot of ascent and try to, run along a bit of a plateau so that I was getting in some elevated training. And then when I come back home and I was running in, 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 in the lakes again, at like a thousand, like, well, the highest point in a thousand metres, I was like, wow, this is like, I, I can feel the, I can feel the effects of training at altitude now. Even though it was a mega altitude, it, it, it was still altitude and uh, them climbs out there were relentless. So yeah, it, 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 it stood me in good stead. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like your picture. Um, the, I guess you went up on the Argyle de Midi. Um, you got a picture yeah. up there somewhere. Yeah, Argyle de Midi went yeah. up in the 
that, that vicinity. That's, um, that's cool up there, isn't it? <laughs> Led Junction. Yeah. Quite pretty. Just did a bit on that side of the valley. Mainly, I well, so we were staying in Les Lesouch. Les Les yeah. Les Les yeah. Les Les so most days I would head towards um, the ski lift. I don't know what the name of the highest ski lift is, but it's like a Pl Pl Plampra, is it called? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Plan Plampra is one of them. I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of them now myself. I've I've been out to Chamonix uh, Valley a few times. Um, so, so head 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 off up towards like that bit of a plateau along there, me and yeah, me yeah. rolling, and then I'd head off towards this little refuge over towards. Yeah. So you, you'll oh, be running on the uh, it's it's the Grand Balcon Nord, isn't it? I'll say the Grand the Balcony, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. remember that, yeah, yeah, no, it's, the, it's fantastic over there. Yeah, and then on the on the on my final day, I did a I did a fifty k run with about five, four to 5,000 metres of vert. Uh, it was really hot. Um, Maggie's friend, Yana, she plotted the route for me and said, oh, it's very runnable, it's beautiful. And <laughs> it was very runnable and it was very beautiful. But after you've already done five to six days hardcore training prior to that, that absolutely kicked the living sh shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that was, I went over to like San Gervais. Um, yeah. It was like a totally different kind of part of Sham compared to the, you know, where the balcony is. Yes. Different kind of terrain, but it, it, oh, it was beautiful. It was on the Mont Blanc side. Yeah, I think, is that the direction that uh, TDS usually goes somewhere over that way, doesn't it? Yeah, because I was looking on Strava and I, there was quite a lot of segments on there and there was people that I knew yes. um, on there that I was following. And when I clicked on their activity, it was like TDS and, and things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, no, yeah. it looked really, really cool. I, I was, I don't think I commented on any of your pictures because I was just too jealous. <laughs> 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 the comments wouldn't have been nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. No, I think, yeah, as you say, it's a fantastic uh, bit of training. And uh, when your body starts adjusting to the altitude and you get all the extra red blood cells kicking through your body, it's. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, it lifts you up. So yeah, so then we're we're back, finish your training for UTS, and then, as you say, it was only about a week to go when it was cancelled. I think. Um, interestingly, I had heard I'd met a guy. Um, I'd stayed in a youth hostel with the family in the Yorkshire Dales, in Ingleton, and the the, the manager of the youth hostel there is best mates with the race director from UTS, and yeah. uh, he he was telling me how telling me all the lengths that the race director was going to to try and keep the race on you know he did yeah, yeah, was the numbers down he'd he changed so many things to to try and make the race go ahead so yeah. i'm sure i'm sure he was the most gutted person I, yeah yeah Definitely. i don't think he was deliberately done at all uh, uh -huh. for mike and um i think he did he did everything in his power to keep it going and yeah yeah that that you know it, it, it had to happen and you know, there's always next year, and I think yeah. a lot of people really. Yeah, yeah it's going to be. I think he did the right thing because I think, I think one of his main worries was. I mean, this is speaking from my point of view. I, th I think one of his main worries were that the locals, with the rising cases in COVID, yeah. I think it, I think they would have just thought it was disrespectful bringing people to the community. Yes. When they had all that going on, so I think he's for his own reputation. I think he did the right thing. Yeah, and I think that's one of the big concerns for the, the types of races um, that, that we like, where you go into remote areas, as you see, it's small villages and things. And when, yeah. when, when the race descends, although we're not talking about 10,000 people or something, it's it's still a lot of people for the size of the village. Of course, um, yeah. And it, it would have an impact. So, so yeah. So then you got uh, focused on the Steve Parr round. Yeah, with five days' notice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, with, with that, I mean, I decided within an hour that I wanted to do it. And then I'd obviously only heard of the round. I knew nothing about it, nothing about the route. Um, so I went in totally blind, really. 
Um, so first of all, I started messaging people saying like, I've got this crazy idea. I want to set off on Thursday or Friday. Can you help me? And with it being such short notice and the weather looking so good for the weekend, everybody was doing Bob Graham's. Yep. And everybody had already taken all my support. Um, not all my support, obviously, but um, there was a, the, the support was scarce. Um, so luckily enough for me, I did manage to get a support crew together and it was a bloody awesome support crew. Um, absolutely phenomenal. Um, and they all did an amazing job. So I managed to rally a support crew. And to be honest, from, from my point of view, I mean, for example, John Parkin, he, he was with me. He, he was penciled in for 24 hours navigating. And then the day after, and I mean, I knew I had 48 hours to complete the challenge. Yeah. So I thought, right, John Parkin, thank you very much, 24 hours now. And then I had Scott Newburn step up for after John Parkin for another, another 24 hours. So with two people, that's it, it's it's... It's quite mean to do that to two people, but I was covered and they was willing to do it. So that was my navigation sorted. And then I also wanted at least two people with me feeding and watering me, carrying kit and leaving the nav man to just focus on doing nothing but navigation. Because don't forget, these, these two guys, they had not had a chance to wreck the room. None of us did. Um, so I'm thinking to myself, like, wow, you know, you got... Two nav men that have not wrecked the route. You've not wrecked the route. You're trying to pull people in from left, right, and centre. Like, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> A lot. Um, so we managed to we managed to get the support together. Um, pe some people I knew, some people I didn't, and it took a lot. It took a lot, a lot, a lot quite a lot out of me. Um, obviously. Building up to UTS, I always, I always write, my, I always write my plan out. So I was, I was losing sleep prior to UTS. A week before it, I just managed to iron everything out, and I thought, yes, for a week now I can get some good sleep in because I won't be worrying about anything. I'd, I'd planned everything, and then I got back from my final training run to then be hit with having to organise a massive event again with five days notice. So that. That, that week of good sleep just went right out the window. I mean, I was going to bed at 10 p.m. thinking, right, I need an early night. You're shattered. Get up early, like 6, 7 a.m., and then crack on. But I was waking up at like 3 a.m. thinking about what I had, what I still had to do. Like, hmm, you know, there's, you still need to upload a GPX file onto your e trek so you haven't done that yet. And as soon as I started thinking that, boom, that was it. I couldn't get back to sleep. I was up at 3 a.m. doing that. And then that was that day. That, that, that was that day sleep gone out the window. And, and it was like that every single day up until Thursday. And I, and I was setting off Thursday night at, at 9 p.m. I tried to get a bit of a sleep in the afternoon Thursday. I managed an hour and a half. Um, so I felt good um, when I set off. But obviously I wasn't, I was nowhere near uh, optimum. But, you know, I must have been all right to get through it in the time I did it in. <laughs> but yeah, that's, a, that's another story, sleep. Yeah, so, well, I guess get, get straight into it. How bad was was the sleep on the route? Um, um, I managed to get, so I set off at 9 p.m. Thursday. First night went like a dream. Um, I remember just keep saying to my support crew, like I've never ever felt this good. Like it was just amazing. I was just, it, it, everything was just effortless. It was seamless. It was just, I felt good. I was happy. Um, I was eating well, I eat, eating loads. Um, people kept said, people kept looking at my food parcels before they, before they met me. Um, because of what I did is I had, I had two sets of kit. I had like two emergency kit bags and two bone bags. So that when Maggie had one, lot of kit on one bum bag full of food and then there was one out on the hill with the supporters yeah. so that when the support was finished the new lot of supporters didn't have to say give me your stuff there was already they'd already got to maggie early got lots and loaded with my stuff and then i just carried on running my transition times for the first 
well, for the first half, I didn't, I literally didn't stop. It was just I kept moving. Yeah. Um, so as they was loading up the food parcels, which I'd pre- uh, prepared, um, they was going, God, he's never going to eat all this. And then Maggie's like, <laughs> watch, this guy can eat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think I've quite finished off every single item in my, in my food parcels, especially as the event went by. But for the first couple of legs, I was like, oh, I think I was running, running out of food on the first couple of legs. <laughs> I think I'd understood how, how hungry I was going to be. Um, so, yeah, so I was, eat, I was eating well, I was drinking well, uh, moving well. First night went really well. Um, got to, so leg one, I had... Jacob Tonkin and I had John Parkin and Liam Mills with me. We had a right good crack. Um, that was from the Moot Hall to Threlkeld. Um, and then at Threlkeld, Jacob dropped off because he'd been working that evening. And John Parkin and Liam carried on with me from Threlkeld to Brothers Water. Liam when we was up on the top, he rang through to Maggie and said, Howard wants a coffee. So she had me a coffee ready. I literally just swiped it and carried on. Um, and then I knew then at that point that any time, like, it got really cold. We like we ran into it. This is like near Patterdale and Glen Ridden area, Brothers Water. And there's always a really nice cloudy version in that valley. And we ran, it was almost like, you'd think it was colder up on the tops. But as we dropped lower and lower and lower and, um, and we, we got into some fog, I, I started getting really cold. And then we could see like the f- slight bit of frost on, on the on the grass at the side of the road when we, when we was running towards Brothers Water. Um, so I thought, right, coffee to warm me up and obviously perk me up a little bit because this is like 4 or 5 a.m. now. So I've been awake for nearly 24 hours at this point, but only moving for maybe six hours. Uh, so I had a coffee and then I knew at this point on this leg, the sun was going to rise. So I was really looking forward to that. Um, we managed to get to, so on leg, that, that, so this is leg three, uh, leg three then setting off, which is Brothers Water to Kirkstone Pass. The sun rose, but just as, just as first light appeared, we was looking up towards like, um, I think it's called High, I can't remember the name of it, but it's near like Kidsty Pike, it's in that vicinity. There was like a family of deer running across the yeah. line. Absolutely amazing. Um, and, the, and you could tell there was on like a family out in the, there was a stag, there was the female and there was like the, the, the little baby one behind it. So that was really nice. Um, that was really nice. I'll, I'll backtrack a little bit as well. So there were many times during the round where, I, looking back now, I think, God, if you hadn't stopped and just took in all the moments, you would have probably gained maybe half an hour. There were times where we'd stop and look and appreciate things that you might not ever get to see again in your life, like that dear moment being one of them. So we stopped for a minute and looked at that. And then when we was up on top of uh, over the Dodds, we all turned our head torches off for a minute and just had a look up at the sky. It was crystal clear. The stars were as, as bright as I'd ever seen them in my whole life. That was another nice little um, beautiful moment. <laughs> but, um, so I'll go back to do it. Yeah, so there, were, there, there was quite a few times when we stopped and appreciate things, which I, th- I thought was pretty good. Um, yeah, I, th- I think it's pretty cool doing that. Um, I mean, why do it? You're not going to see, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic setting the records and stuff, but at the end of the day, you're, you're out there to enjoy the, the mountains, the, the hills, the fells. Great. Yeah. So then we send the little deer family, carried on moving, and then you could just tell what was coming because it was first light, it was like just a, a dark blue, and then there was like this pinky colour, then it was like a pinky orangey colour, and then it was a bright orange, and then all of a sudden there was this little peak of like bright orange ball. Um, and then the sun rose, and it was just like this big, bright, amazing ball of orange. And just just, just the energy of that, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps talking about it, just just the energy of that, uh, that really perks me up. And I was just talking to the lads, and and they were like, how are you moving like this? And I'm like, ah, I don't know. I said, but I feel really, really comfortable. I mean, I, don't, I mean, I wasn't sprinting. But it, it was just like dancing. Do you know what I mean? It was just like 
just yeah, just like flawless. He was moving really well, touching all the tops, happy, smiling. That was a really good leg. And then because I'd had five days to put it together, I looked at the map quickly. I looked at the map a lot, but it, there was a lot to digest, you know, on that map. And I'd not quite realised I was on local territory there, and I knew where Hart of Fell was. And then I said to Liam, "Where's next?" And he said, "Hart of Fell, out and back." And I'm like, "Really? Hart of Fell, out and back? Like that's about six miles, like you know, just an out and back." But it's a part I knew well. So I headed out to Hart of Fell, and on the way back, I, I had the sun on my back, and I and I first started to feel a little tiny bit of not fatigue, but like a relaxing, I could feel my eyes like, I was thinking, Ugh, like, it's a snap out of this because this is not good. So um, we radioed through for another coffee, ready for when we hit, when, when we hit Kirkstone Pass. On the way down to Kirkstone, we got to where we right and we could see, um, we could see like the Glen Ridden and Patterdale Valley, there was a cloudy version and it was really nice. Uh, same on Windermere as well, Windermere had uh, covered in cloud. So we got to Kirkstone Pass. Um, who did I have there? So John Parkin. So yeah, John stopped up. John had already stopped. I had Liam and Nathaniel with me on that leg on, from Brothers Water to Kirkstone. I had a new member join me there. I had uh, Steve Birkinshaw, if you've heard of Steve. Yep. Uh, um, phenomenal fell runner and navigator. So Steve joined us and Nathaniel um, stayed on that leg. From, from Kirkstone, we climbed up to Red Screes, headed over to the Fairfield vicinity, I think it was Dove Crag, Hart Crag in that area. And that was another brilliant leg, moving really well. Started to get warm up, um, around about that time. It, it, it was heading towards like lunchtime. Um, so we, we hit Fairfield, then we dropped down, heading towards like Grasmere, down um, Great Rig, and then we took a ride and we come out of the pub called the White Swan, I think it was, and uh, the legendary Joss Naylor were there. I, I saw the, the pictures that, uh, that Joss posted. Um, things just kept getting better and better. Yeah, I, I, I thought, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's when you know you're doing something serious when, uh, when Joss Naylor comes out to shake your hand and cheer you yeah. on. <laughs> you don't you, you don't do the transition there where you run through you kind of stop and have a couple of minutes chatting to joss <laughs> yeah i think i had a couple of like three or four minutes maybe five minutes talking to you know joss and then like i had another coffee i took my time and i was then joined Nath nathaniel stopped there and so did steve and they had a complete new um support crew then um it was john knapp initially just john on his own um, but about a couple of miles further down the road, I had Ben Turner meet me, if you know Ben. Yep, yeah, I know Ben. Yeah, um, Sabzi's husband. Um, and yeah, and things just kept getting better and better, um, as I keep saying. I was still moving well. Um, I think I was, I should have put more sun cream on and wore a cap a bit earlier on. I might have got, I might have got hit with a bit too much sun then, because as... We, uh, we met Ben, and then from 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 that point, then out to water, we had to go up to Weatherland, which was quite a severe climb. And the, the these lines you take on this um, on this round, I mean, you look at it and you think 100 and 115 miles approximately, with approximately 45,000 meters of elevation. And you think, yeah, that's doable. But if you if, when you look at the trace, you don't quite realise what the terrain's like. Yeah. So the line up to Weatherland, it wasn't the tourist path, it was the Felvener's room. Uh, so there, there wasn't a path, it was just a, a, a climb from a lot of uh, rocks, crags and heather, which was which was fine, you know, I was fine with that, but that's when I started to fade a tiny little bit. That, that's the first time I felt a little bit, uh, my heart rate lifted dramatically. Uh, I said, I'm, I'm going to have to slow down. I'm, you know, I'm, I feel a bit sick and I'm, 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 I'm breathing at my ass. Um, and what had happened is, all it were, I started feeling queasy. And we figured it out. I'd, I'd started drinking Coca-Cola and it had not been, it had the fizz shaking out of it. So once I let the gas out, um, once I started releasing the pressure, <laughs> <laughs> 
once I pumped a few times. <laughs> um, yeah, I was feeling I was feeling grand again. Um, and then we was on to like the Coniston Fells. Um, there's a few out and back sections on there. Ben and John was winding me up. They said that we need to go up here, then up there, and then they pointed to a summit somewhere. I can't remember the name of it. And I said, "Oh, I've been down there before on the training room. Which way are we going?" And they pointed where we was actually going, but I thought they pointed. We took to, the, to this place where we took a massive drop and then a back up again. And I'm like, oh, there's no way I'm going down there. Find me an alternative route. I said, because I've been down there on a training run. And I never, I can never find the path. I always hate it. And they said, you'll be right, you'll be right. And then there was kind of, I don't know whether they was winding me up or whether they was telling the truth, but they'd not quite realised where I thought I was going. And when we actually did the line, we just followed the console line. And like, once I realised we wasn't doing that, I'm like, you bastard you was winding me up and they're like yeah we, we did wonder why you was kicking off about what's taking you down there because it's not actually a bad climb um so from there then we went to cockley beck and we was met by another lot of support crew um so ben turner stayed on with us and john knapp finished at cockley beck i can't remember whether cockley beck was uh, Crockley Beck. Beck was like seven, so I'm well over the halfway mark there. And I felt good at Cockley Beck. Yep. But when we left Cockley Beck, I decided to, I've not had any real, like, I mean, I, I've been eating real food, quiche and a bit of, you know, some pork pies and um, I'd had a hell of a lot of sugary stuff, a lot of bars. Um, but I decided, to have a, I decided to have a steak and kidney pie from Morrison's there and a coffee. Um, and I don't know, after that, things went south a little bit. Um, there was a horrible climb out of Cockley Beck. We hit a few more tops. Once, once I got the climbing out of the way and we was off the rough stuff, I was okay, but I started to feel a bit queasy. I, I, every single climb, my heart rate went sky high. The climbs weren't just climbs, they were like vertical grass tussicky, um, really slow gl- slow going climbs. Um, so I started feeling the sickiness on every single climb after that. Um, but I was all right, I, I was still taking on food, I was still talking, I was still drinking, it just, things started to get, that's where the wheels slowly started to fall off. What I think it was, is I think it was just the tiredness kicking in, like, you know, at this point now I've been awake for, 36 hours um, and, it, and it was bound to happen at some point there was uh, uh, you know I couldn't keep on going at the rate I was going because at this point I think I'd set an unrealistic schedule anyway which was if I took no breaks I would have got back to the moot hall in 36 hours um, so by setting that unrealistic uh, schedule I would have had six about, about a six hour buffer, you know, for cock ups and sleeps and problems or whatever. So at this, at, it, it was, I was between the start and Cockley Beck, I think I'd attained an extra two hours on my buffer. So I had, I had plenty of dollar in the bank. I call it money in the bank. I had plenty of money in the bank to, to, to spend. Um, so I started eating into this, you know, I started taking, I started taking money out of the bank because I would making withdrawals at this point. Um, that, this was a hard leg, Cockley Beck, uh, because it finished in Wasdale, you took in all the, the, um, all the, uh, the Scarfell Massive um, in the dark. Um, so you can imagine what it was like. It just went from tough to tougher. Um, so when, when it when the sun set then it, you know things got really tough that's when i started thinking you know what have i done like can i do this um like it, it was just the uh, from that point i think it was like, as i was like hitting the scarfell area i'm thinking you know you've got you're only just over the halfway point and you're feeling like this like you know have you bitten off more than you can chew that, that's when I started having a bit of self-doubt. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I didn't tell anybody. This is just me, in my own thoughts in my head. No, it's just it's, it's what goes through your head, isn't it? And you think, yeah. 
you know, I'm kind of you know, I'm in this situation now. Now, what, what can I do to yeah um, get get things moving again, get things rolling? And... I mean, it had gone dark and it was like midnight. So this is like going into the second night with no sleep. And all I wanted to do, I knew that I knew all I had to do was have a sleep, and I'd be a brand new man. But I had to kind of make a decision as to how much sleep. Yeah. And where I had it. Now I knew I had a camper van in the Blasdale Head. And it was so so near but so far because of the, the pace which I'd dropped to. Like my body, my, my legs my, my my body was fine. It was just my my eyes and my brain. I just they were shutting down and I was struggling to stay awake. And on that kind of terrain, you can't afford to make one false move. I mean, on that leg, sorry, so I didn't actually say who who, who was on the cockney back leg, who, who I was who I was joined by. So Ben Turner carried on. Um, I was met by Scott Newburn, a lad, a lad called Andy Fid, um, Paul Nelson. Everyone's heard of Paul Nelson. Yep. Yeah, I was running with Paul last week. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, and a gentleman called Tim Ripper. Now Tim has already Tim Tim's finished the round. So Tim Tim had a lot of knowledge. Tim was a, oh. a, a really good guy to have on that leg. Um, because he'd obviously already done the route. So I'm just making sure I haven't, I haven't missed anybody off that, um, who I've just said was with us. We had Tim, we had Paul Nelson, Scott Newburn, Ben Turner, oh, Max Driscoll. How could I forget Max? We had Max, we had Max with us. Max was on the Coniston leg as well. So it's a lot of, um, it's a lot of people to remember, you know, when you're trying to well, tell the story. It is, and I mean, as we said beforehand, we'll, we'll make sure we we'll put all the names in the show notes. So yeah, Ma Ma Max, you know, you know what, Max, Max has only just started running, um, terrific runner, fell runner, uh, trail runner, and he wants to get into doing the mountainous stuff, cool. uh, really good friend of mine and Maggie's, so I invited him out and, you know, just to have a taste and to see what, what you know, what it's all about, and, and he did great, he did, he did awesome, so, so Max was on that leg with us, um, Paul Nelson, and I, I mean, I've started, the reason why I've just started telling you about who was on this leg with us is because Paul had a nasty fall. Uh, Paul tripped up, you know, right. that area, it's, it, it changed from like fells to still fells, but just a totally different kind of terrain, sharp, yeah. bold, bold, boulder fields going yeah. off the sky with huge cavities in them. And then if, I mean, I'm not saying he wasn't looking where, where he was going, but he obviously caught his foot on something and he was in front of me and I seen him fall and I knew it was, it was, it, it weren't nice to see. I was like, are you all right? And everyone just said to me, don't, don't you stop. We'll sort him out. But I wanted to see if he was okay. So I stopped yeah. momentarily and all I could see was blood. And I thought, oh, bloody hell, like, what's he done? Like, my, my worst fear is he split his head open because he, like, he, he, his head hit the deck. But um, his face, he broke his nose and cut his nose open. Huh. Um, but he was all right. He's, he's a really, really tough guy. Yeah, I was going to say, l lucky for Paul, uh, he, he hasn't actually got very far to fall, has he? Because he's quite short. Yeah, he's a little man. <laughs> <laughs> he, does, he does call himself a dwarf, so I think we can uh, joke about that. <laughs> there was all sorts of comments. You know, we was all laughing about it after ten minutes. You know, people yeah. were saying, oh, "Your attention seeker, you've done it on purpose." <laughs> So yeah, he, uh, it's like Colin Green cutting his uh, his leg open on Sabs's FKT. Same thing. It's just you know these people look for attention. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so he, he took he took a really rough tumble and then he took himself off to get to get washed. He took a diversion off to Sprinkling Town, um, and we carried on doing what we was doing. And we met him down at Sprinkling Town. Once he'd once he'd had a wash and, and you know I think it was just a broken nose. He hurt his shin as well, but. That was something internal which you couldn't see. There was no blood. Okay. Um, so he decided he was meant to do all the way to, he was meant to go to Wasdale and beyond, but he made a, de a decision uh, that one, once we got to Wasdale, he was going to, he was going to call it, you know, call it a day there. Um, so we made it over. So we was going over the Scarfell range. I started dragging my ass a hell of a lot. I needed to, I needed to sleep, but we just kept on going. Um, so once we'd once we'd got up um, to like Hill Crag, Scaffold Pike, um, to then get to Scar Fell, we decided to 
once we hit Broad Stand, we took a right turn and we started off going up Lord's, Lord's Rake. Yeah. But we took the West West Wall Traverse, did they call it? Yeah. Called the West Wall Traverse. Wow, that was epic. And there was all that. I had such a good support crew because they knew I was falling asleep. They knew yeah. I was in pain. They knew I was tired. And it was like, there was so like so full of enthusiasm. It was yeah. like, have you yeah. ever done the West Wall Traverse? Yeah, you like, don't want to fall off there, do you? <laughs> they're all looking at me going, you're in for a real treat. And that's how <laughs> they were saying it. They're like, you're in for a real treat. Yeah, I, I, I did that on uh, on Gwyn's uh, double. I did the his second leg three with him. And we went up that way. Yeah, and like, yeah. and as we were doing it, all the lads were buzzing. There was all like, there was all like, yeah, come on, yeah. And there was just like, they, they was having more fun than I was, obviously. But, um, you know, it's you, two o'clock. You love that kind of thing as well, don't you? So. Yeah, and I, yeah and I absolutely <laughs> love it. And, and, and I enjoyed that little bit as well. It was like a proper scramble. And I had, mm. you know, I had somebody up the rear, and then I had somebody up the front and they're going like, right, come, you know, there was almost guiding me up saying, well, you know, because I was just literally looking at the rock in front of me because it got a bit wet and a bit slippy. And yeah. with these lads having done it before, they had it right and they come over to the left, come over to the right. And uh, yeah, we nailed that section, got to Scarfell and then we come actually down the Lord's Rake descent, which was pretty good, pretty fun. Um, I was all right on the descent, so we nailed it, we nailed it down Lord's Rake. And then it was just like um, almost a straight line from there to Wasdale. We, oh no, sorry, we had um, a summit to hit. I can't remember the name of it. I'm terrible. I'm absolutely terrible. Yeah. I could get view range around and tell you, but. I think when you get to the top of Lord's Rake, you've, you've got to go off to the right to get to the summit of Scarfell, haven't you? Yeah. And then um, drop off Scarfell down Lord's Rake. Yeah. And then Straight line. There's a there's a way right above seven hundred and fifty from there. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that that one's obviously not on the Bob route, but. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that's not on the Bob route. Yeah. I know. I know where you mean, but uh, yeah, I haven't been across to that one. So we had a, we had a bit of a climb. Yeah. We had a bit of a climb after that, and then it was a drop into. Sorry, I'm not being rude. I'm just getting view range up because it seems. I'd like to actually tell you the names of these summits. Ling Mel. Ling Mel, if you know what that is. Yes. Yeah, so we hit, we hit Ling Mel and then we dropped down into Wasdale. Um, I've been saying to the lads, look, I, I need to sleep. The longer, the longer I have, the, the, the better I'm going to be on leg eight which was another really hard leg leg seven and leg eight were the the, the biggies yep. so i said i'd like an hour um if i can half an hour at the, at the bare minimum so we got there i quickly got changed i quickly got chucked in the camper van i had a pot noodle got my head down and just as i just as i managed to get to sleep maggie comes in and she's like Right, come on, you've had you've had half an hour. So I'm like, really? Like I feel I feel like I've only had five minutes. Like I've I've only just got to sleep. I said I, I need more time. I said I, ha I haven't slept. It's going to be counterproductive. So she let me have some more sleep. I think they let me have another five minutes. But I, man I did manage to nod off for five minutes. Yep. Um, and I later found out they'd only give me twenty minutes. <laughs> 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 they give me twenty minutes in total. Yeah. But that was enough to, it was just like a mental, a mental boost. Um, I had another coffee uh, and then we all got marching again. So at Wasdale then, we had, we went up to, um, I think it was Red Pike. Yeah, Red Pike from there. Um, Red Pike, um, out to Haycock, then back to Skulk Fell, Steeple, Pillar. Um, Kirk Fell and then over to Great Gable and then it was in between Kirk Fell and Great Gable Sleep Monsters caught up with me again the sun had already rose it was an amazing sunrise again but I, I'd been I'd been moving along for a while and thinking I felt really bad on the lads because because we were, we was behind schedule um because it was behind schedule and I, I kept thinking well what happens if they already had plans for Sunday um, I'm holding them back now 
So I wanted to have a sleep a long time ago, but I, I, I daren't tell them. But it got to the point where I thought, say how it is, fuck it. So I said, like, like I need to sleep. So here's some grass. I'm just going to let you pull my hood over my head. I just wanted a quick micro nap. Five minutes is all I'll need. I said, because I was looking at Great Gable and thinking, how the hell am I going to get up that feeling like this? And it worked a treat. I mean, I lied down for, I said, wake me up after five. I was asleep within a minute. And then my leg twitched and it woke me up. And I just woke up and I just felt this mental clarity come back again. So I quickly whipped my hood back and I said, right, let's go. And they went, that's well weird. He said, we just looked at each other and went, give each other the one minute finger. Because if to say, we're going to wake you up in a minute. Yeah. So back up again, moving, smashed out, felt really good then. Smashed out great yeah. game. Like, this is Saturday morning now, isn't it? Um, this, is this is Saturday morning now, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, Saturday morning and we're heading over towards Buttermere. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of feeling better. I'm moving a hell of a lot better than I was in the, in, in the night time. And I kept looking at my watch and I kept thinking, the record's well out the window. I mean, the, the record was never the, I mean, the ultimate goal was just to finish within 48. Yeah. I've been on that much of a downer through the night. I just kept thinking, is, is 48 even uh, attainable now at this point? Because I'm only going to get slower and slower and slower. So I got to um, bottom here eventually, and I had a brand new support crew there. And I was also met by a chap called Martin Stone. I don't know if you've heard of Martin Stone. I have heard of Martin Stone, yes. Yeah, so Martin was there, uh, which was a bit of a surprise. And when I got there, I was just in this deck chair. It had a brand new T-shirt on it. It had a brand new pair of trainers. Everything was laid out for me. I mean, it looked a little bit more... They'd been plotting things behind my back, basically. I'd been planning. On the way down, I kept thinking, I'm going to have a good hour's kit. I need a good hour's kit, and I'm just going to enjoy this last leg and make it back within 48 hours. And when I got there, they're like... Howard, you can do it. You're so close. You're gonna, you, you're gonna do it. You, you know, you can still break the record. And I'm like, how? Like, look, look how, look how much I've diminished. And they said, all you have, they've done all the calculations. They said, all you have to do is 2.5 miles an hour from this point now, and you broke it. So I said, oh, like, side, like, I'll have a go. <laughs> Well, so, yeah, look, yeah. You, you, you were looking forward to going easy at this point, didn't you think? No, yeah. I'm going to have to put some effort in. <laughs> you bastards. That's, that's just that's <laughs> about the of the window. Um, my actual plan was to not have a sleep in the camper van because it was full of tourists in bottom here. I would yeah. have preferred to have had a sleep on the hill, maybe somewhere up Whitless Pike, yeah. just off the trail, so it would have been a little bit quieter and I would have had a better, a better sleep. But when I sat down on the chair, um, Maggie and her friend Heather... They, they whipped both my shoes off. So it was like Inspector, you know, like, I think it's Inspector Gadget or something, or is it another programme where you go like that and then all the clothes just get put on them like by robots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Literally. Sat down, they were putting sun cream on my arm, sun cream on my neck, they changed, they whipped my T-shirt off on me, put a T-shirt on. I was being mothered to, absolutely mothered. I was embarrassed. I was being mothered. <laughs> and it was just like, go on, go, you can do it. And then... Yeah, that was it. It was just like game on. But I knew that on all the climbs, they were knocking me sick. Um, the thought of food was knocking me sick. Yep. Uh, at this point, I could only eat bananas, uh, which was strange because I'm, I'm a bad chocoholic. They had Snickers, they had Cheer Charge, they had OTE bars. Um, and all I literally through the last leg, all that got me through was banana, water, shop blocks. And shop blocks, I couldn't even eat them anymore. I literally, I was swallowing them like pills. I was like putting it in my mouth and just having a swig of water just to get the calories in. Yeah, and Coca-Cola. Um, so the plan was to take my times on the climbs, which I did. I just, I just made sure that I kept my heart rate really low. And then when I got to the summits and my flat bits, I just set off into a yomp again. <clears throat> and then on the descents, just let gravity take me as fast as I could which was faster than my run, but it wasn't how I would normally descend, if you know what I mean. Um, my, the front of my toes from stubbing into the, my trainers yeah. and my wards were just absolutely trashed. But all I kept thinking is two and a half miles an hour, 
two and a half miles an hour. That is all you need to do. Just keep going. Just keep going. And um, I, the way the way the lads sold it, so I was joined by some new lads. Uh, I was joined by Jacob Tonkin again. Uh, we'd recycled Jacob. He come back onto the last leg. Um, a guy called Dan Armstrong, um, a lad called Chris Richards, and my friend Dave Hurrigan, Dave H. So they had said um, it's dead easy this leg. You've literally just got four more to do. But I think they lied. I think it was five in the end. <laughs> or maybe I have heard them. I thought I just had four to do, and they told me that I only had two climbs to do. And there were way more than that. <laughs> flagged me and it worked. But the beauty of it was this last leg over like the um, over the Newlands area, which was like um, Whitless Pike, uh, Wandorp, um Do you know that area? I do. I'm, <laughs> the Newlands I'm trying to think of the names of everything because I've done the, uh, the the teenager with altitudes over that way, hasn't it? That's it, yeah. So we had like um, the glory leg, Whitless Pike, Wandorp, uh, Crag Hill, Sale, Grassmoor, Hope Gill Head, Grisdale Pike, and then after Grisdale Pike, then it was just bumped all the way downhill uh, to the Moot Hall. So we, I managed to run all the way down, well, I, I, I ran as much as I could. I, I, I hiked, which, which is pretty much what I did all the way through the whole of the round. I, I hiked the hills, but obviously on the last leg, I was hiking up the hills a lot slower. I was running the flats a lot slower, and I was taking the descents a lot slower. And then we were greeted by the, um, the final tarmac bit then in, is it Braithwaite? Yes. So you got into Braithwaite, and it was just all road from that section. And I just literally just... <clears throat> went as fast as I could then and I just kept clock watching and I knew I was going to get it at this point unless something really bad happened like I collapsed or something <laughs> but um, I couldn't see that happening but I knew it was going to be tight um, and then as I got a little bit close oh no it was in Braithwaite so my girlfriend Maggie joined me for the last leg as well so we had like a little a little crew with me now um, we were all just chatting. I was, I was absolutely. I just kept saying, um, "This is the hardest I've ever pushed myself ever." And um, when we got to the high street in Keswick, where the Moot Hall is, there was a one-way system in place, and there was, the, was market there by just by bloody pure coincidence. And they wouldn't let me. So as you're looking at the Moot Hall, the steps are on the right hand side. They wouldn't. If I was to go up the right hand side, I'd be running into the people towards me the way they've done yeah. the one with them. And somebody ran ahead and said, please, can you go up this way? And they said, nah. <laughs> so I was forced to go on the, follow the one-way one way system. And so I had to run behind the moot hall, get to the steps. <laughs> and I finished um, 42 hours, 37 minutes and 15 seconds. Approximately, I think it was like 17, 17 minutes behind the, the record, which is nothing really. Absolutely nothing, but it's 17 minutes is 17 minutes. <laughs> yeah, well, 17 minutes ahead of the record. Yeah, ahead of the record. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the way you said it, it sounded like you missed the record, but you didn't. You, yeah, you no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. no, you finish, you, you, you look back and you think, knowing what I know now, and, you know, yeah. I, could have, I could have done a lot more and I could have, I could have taken a hell of a lot more than. Whoever does that, I think it's a bit late. In, obviously, as the days go by now, the, the, the nights are getting, uh, the days are getting shorter, basically. Yeah. Uh, the conditions are getting colder and the weather's getting worse. So, I mean, somebody could come and take it off me between now and winter. But I think it's going to be, if anybody's going to take it, it's going to be next year now, I think. Um, if I could give them any advice, which I gladly will, I wouldn't set off at 8 p.m. like I did and do two nights. <laughs> I think I think there's a sub forty to be got on that course easily. I think I think I could have got sub forty. Had I set off that that's what that's what ruined me. It was it was going over the Scarfell range. Yeah. Um on the second night. Uh, you know, on, on on such little sleep and setting off at such a silly time. And also on the round, you can you don't you don't have to start at the Moot Hall. 
I could have started, I could have started at Cockley Beck and finished in Cockley Beck. So I could have got that section out of the way, uh, uh, do you know what I mean, earlier yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. So if you thought about it, there's, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a better, a better way. But I, went, I wanted to, when I read up about it, it said most people follow the tradition. The traditional way to do it is you start at the move hall, you finish at the move hall. But it, yeah. if you didn't, it did. It, it you could. It's you're well within your rights. If, yeah, you know. yeah. As you say, there's a there's a few options there. Um, either change the time and so you go across Scarfell in the in daylight rather than in the night. Again, yeah. if, if you did it in the uh, back end of June, there's very little darkness anyway. That's a yeah. another another good option, but wouldn't it? Early on in the year as well. Yeah. 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 yeah, um, I think May seems to be very popular for records yeah. in the Lake District. A lot of people said they'd, uh, they'd, they'd have a go at it if they were going to do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. So, I mean, the, the, the question I really want to ask you is, um, you know, I've, I've been out recently with, uh, with with Gwyn and his double bob and I was on um, Sabs' uh, FKT on the Pennine Way. Um, <laughs> and I, I've, I've come to realise that you, you, you guys... Um, doing these big things, you, you all uh, you, you end up being a bit of a diva at some point. So, so go on, Howard. What, what, what were what the uh, requests were you sending out to your team at uh, some silly time in the morning or something? Well, do you know what? To be honest, nothing at all. I was quite, I was, I was well behaved. I think. Um, yeah, well, I, I'll, I'll be getting in touch with some of your pacers to find out. Yeah, you know, <laughs> better off asking them. But the only thing. I did make my crew do on the very last leg, and it was Max who made my cordial. Um, I was drinking black currant cordial, and he made it too strong. I had a drink of it, and it was, it was almost neat. It, it nearly, <laughs> you know, when you drink neat cordial, and yeah. like it, back of your throat, it's got like a chemical in it, and it <coughs> makes you cough. So I was like, oh, what the fuck's this? I'm like, I'm not, I'm not that. And because my brain was too mashed, one of the support lads said, do you, want us to, do you want us to pour some out and put some water in it? We'll mix it with some more water. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, do that. <laughs> so I had them like, pour, pour a bit out and put a bit more water in it until we got it just how I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, really, and that was on the last leg. All right, um, yeah. Did you yeah. just add the bananas then? <laughs> <laughs> that was it, yeah. Yeah. Strong coffee. I like my coffee strong, but I think Mag Maggie knew that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was it. Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's epic. Um, it's a really cool, um, an interesting round. Um, personally, <laughs> looking at it, I, to, to, to me, it looks more interesting than, than doing something like a, a double bob. Um, oh, definitely, yeah. So, I, I, I am I'm not saying it's harder or easier or anything else. It just, it just looks more interesting. Yeah. Well, I was intrigued because, and I don't know, I don't even know why I started thinking about it. But on on the leg between Cockley Beck to Buttermere, so Tim Ripper, he's I've never done a Bob Graham, so I can't comment. Tim Ripper's done a Bob Graham, and he's done he's done the steep par round. And I said to him, I know, I know, if you did a double Bob, there'd be more mileage and more ascent. But in your opinion. Which do you think is harder, this round or a double bob? And he said, in, in his opinion, well, uh, the steep power round is harder. Because when you do a bob, he, and his reason being, when you do the bob, the lines are that obvious now. It's like, there's no real thought in it. You can almost, there's, all, there's, there's trods everywhere. Um, with this round, it's like, it's some of the lines you take. There's absolutely nothing there, but in years to come, I think they, I think this round is going to get really, really, really popular yep. next year, especially. I think I think uh, I've, I've heard a rumor there's going to be a guy having a winter ascent um, this year, which would be brilliant. I'll open up with that. Um, I don't want to say it just in case it doesn't happen, yep. but um, yeah, as it gets more popular, people are going to learn the route more and the lines more and. It's gonna they're gonna get quicker at doing it if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I mean that. I, mean, I think there'll be other people that will have different opinions. Of course. 
Yeah, I, I think, I mean, one of the things for the, the Bob Graham round now is there's so much information available. You know, if, if you're looking at doing it, you've got a choice of um, 30 different GPX files within five minutes and, and things like that. And and all of your paces, it's, you know, it's relatively easy to find paces, navigators that know the leg really well. Um, whereas, it, as you say, this this one, it's, it's still a bit more of an adventure um, so far. Um, so yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah, an awesome round. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I, I, there was one point I got to Wasdale and I went straight to the camper on my uh, not the camper. So we had Maggie's car, our car, and we had the camper. And I started faffing about in the front for some reason of the of the car. I wanted something. All well, my contact lenses and my glasses because I took them out. I wore you know. Contact lenses, you've only been aware of them for 12 hours. I kept mine in from when I set off till I got to Wasdale and I had my sleep. I took them out. So I was I was fiddling around taking my lenses out and I nearly cried. I nearly burst into tears. Maggie said, you're all right. And I said, Maggie, I said, this is the hardest thing I've ever done. And as I was saying it, I, I was I was like, <laughs> you know, you're like yeah. holding, holding back, you're like ready to cry. And I said, if, I said, Maggie, I said, I want to quit. I said, if, I, if, I, if there was a way out, now I'd take it. I said, but I can't. I said, I, I know I can't. I've got these lads here. I've told everybody that I'm going to do it, and I, I can't. But if there, if there was a way out, I was like, oh, you know, it crossed my mind. You know, it, it was it was tough. I felt it, 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 it was, yeah, I felt, I felt, I felt horrible. I felt grim. It was tough. I nearly bailed, basically. <laughs> yeah. I thought about it. Yeah, we're laughing about it, but uh, I think it happens on pretty much every time you push yourself hard enough to be really satisfied with what you've done. I, th I think you, you hit that point somewhere yeah. in it. Yeah. Um, and, and in some ways, if you don't hit that point of questioning why you're there, what, what you're doing, should you continue? If you don't hit that point, sometimes uh, I kind of don't feel quite as satisfied after I finish because you think, well, I, I could have pushed harder, I could have done more. But I think what, what, once you've been through that, you know that, okay, yeah, maybe you could do things differently, but you couldn't just push harder because you were, yeah. you were reaching that point. So, I mean, I got to the point where over the scarf hell, I was saying to myself, I think after you've done this, mate, you need to have a bit of a stint off running completely, maybe find a new hobby for a couple of months. That's, that, that was genuinely my thoughts, I kept thinking. Yeah. Um, I thought, yeah, I need to find a new hobby. And I've, I've said I'm going to do a winter wane right around. And when I was doing the steep par round, I said, fucking no chance. There's no <laughs> way in where I'm doing a winter wane rise. No way. I don't, thought, don't disappoint no. me. I'm looking forward to supporting on that. Listen, so the, so the day after, when I had a woke up and was eating breakfast, I looked at Maggie and I said, I'm still doing the winter wane rise, you know? <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's still on. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, so so uh, how long was it before you ran again? In, uh, two days, three days. <laughs> after, after this, yeah. Do you mean after this? After this, Steve Parr. Yeah. I haven't ran. Yet. Um, my feet. So my, I went to physio for a massage on Tuesday. She said she's had me in Worcester States. She said she's had my muscles in in Worcester condition after tra after training blocks. Yep. She said. I believe how much there's, there's just no resistance in your muscle she says you've come out of this so 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 well you've recovered amazingly the only thing i have suffered with is my feet um no blisters just they've swelled quite a bit yeah i get that on all my long on anything over 100 mile i get i get swollen feet um so they've only just gone down today um and i've been to the gym this morning and i've just done 30 minutes on the elliptical bike um, my coach just said I can run at the weekend if I feel okay. Uh, yeah. I'm allowed to. I'm allowed, I'm allowed. Basically, from now to the weekend, I'm allowed to hike and well, walk and cycle. I've done nothing until today. I've just been on the elliptical bike. I felt okay. More than anything, I keep getting hit with bouts of fatigue. Like yeah. I'll just fine, and then come mid afternoon, I'll just be like absolutely drained. Just from doing basic jobs, like I might go to the supermarket and get some fresh groceries, and then. I'll come back in a while. 
I need to go to bed. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'll play on this for as long as I can. <laughs> yeah. My, oh, are you tired? I'm like, yeah, I don't think I can make tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need you want, you want that support crew to uh, to carry on supporting you, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, just you know, don't get too used to it. You'll be like uh, like Demo. Um, I, I met him last week without supporting Sabs. First thing he did was he, he didn't open the gate. So uh, <laughs> it, it was mentioned a few more times over the next six hours. <laughs> <laughs> I was speaking to Sabrina the other day, and she was telling me when you did your race that like you were opening gates for people still. When you should have been, <laughs> you should have been, you should have been cable tying the gate shut. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, you just get used to it. Do you want a drink? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's mad. mad. Yeah. So it's, it sounds like a absolutely brilliant round, and uh, but so some of the things I noted down as you were going through was about the. The, the deer, the stars, the sunrise, yeah, uh, versions, the uh, the second sunrise, it just Beautiful. yeah, it's, things things I'll never see again. I mean, I'll see another sunrise and I'll see another sunset, but that exact one, at that exact time, in that exact color, never again. Yeah. Only I've seen that. Only people that was with me at that time saw that, and that's what's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's, that's what keeps getting us out to the mountains, isn't it? It's just. That, that is why that that is why I run the way I do, and the times I run that art and do the do the kind of things I do because they're just adventures <clears throat> at the end of the day, and you know you you've got to love it, and uh, I do love it, and that's why I do it. <laughs> cool. Cool. Um, anything you want to say or feel obliged to say about sponsors or or any uh, or anything, yeah, anything please. else to do? Shout outs to. I mean, I'd feel really bad if I miss somebody, but I apologise if I do. But I'm going to say thank you to my whole support crew as a support crew because if I, there's too many names and if I miss one, I'm in the doghouse. So thank you very much. Without without them, I, I just could not have done it. And they're such a, such a great, great team. You know, they were phenomenal, every single one of them. Um, so that's that. Um, Montaigne gave me an awesome kit drop before I set off. Um the, uh, one of my one of my, one of my favourite garments I wore on that is everybody's heard of the prism jacket. They've now brought out like a prism ultra jacket, which is very very similar to the um, the, only, the only thing I could compare it to is the arm um, rotor smock. Okay. So it's a very lightweight thin prima laugh garment, but by Montaigne, that was brilliant. So compact, lightweight, and very warm. Um, I was whipping that on and off when I got cold. Um, so yeah, I had a wicked kit drop off Montaigne, um, OTE Sports, they sent me some, um, I, I, I use quite a lot of their supplements, I use their soy, soy protein powder, um, and the, some of these bars called Duo Bars, they're like Rice Krispie Squares, right. they're quite, 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 quite light on the stomach, um, full of energy, yep. um, so yeah, thank you to OTE Sports. Thank you to Mountain King. Uh, I've recently become supported by Mountain King, who made the poles. Cool. Um, so big thanks, big shout out for them for supplying me with some new poles. Um, and if anybody would like some new poles, get in touch. I can give them a discount code. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, Precision Hydration. Yep. Uh, they help me out with um, hydration. They're really, really, really good. Um, what's in, what's in, oh, Varga. Varga, for, uh, they give me a couple of caps to wear, me and Maggie. So I borrowed Maggie's and then I use my own as well for the round and for some protection. <laughs> really cool caps. Good colours. Um, and I think, oh, massive, massive thank you to my coach for training me. Um, how could I forget Margarita? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, she's shy from the limelight anyway, Margarita. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, should, we should shout about her. <laughs> yeah, oh, she's she's class. She's awesome. She's brilliant. I think that's pretty much it off the top of my head. 
Yeah, no, it's, it's just, or I'll, I'll send you a message and you can put it on the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll 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 check things and put put write down names and things so we don't miss anything. But it's uh, it, it's just great because, as you say, the Felwyn and community, the way everybody supports each other on these things, is is absolutely phenomenal. And yeah, oh, yeah. talk about it enough and highlight it enough. Um, it's it, it's brilliant. Like, like you say, Steve Wilson. Uh, sorry, Steve, but Paul Wilson. Right. I think give you the idea. <laughs> didn't you? Sorry to interrupt. Um, X Miles and Squirrels Nut Butter. How could I forget about them? They support me as well. <laughs> cool. X Miles. Sorry, if I didn't say it then, I would have forgot. <laughs> oh, no, no problem. Um, so Squirrels Nut Butter, that's. Um, I, I, that that's that, your feet, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, feet, yeah the, the foot stuff is brilliant. Yeah. It's got tea tree oil in it, which um, makes your feet feel amazing. Cool. Yeah, I've, I've, I've not tried it myself. It, I think it is it an American company. Uh, I think. Yeah, it's a cool first. Got some, and it was. I love it. Brilliant. Yeah. Nice. Happy tours. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you're an X Miles ambassador now as well. I think, aren't you? Yeah. Cool. So sorry, I interrupted. Then you were talking. Yeah, about no, that. I was just saying it's it, it's important to to mention all these things and because they, they make these things happen, um, and. Uh, People like yourself that are hoping to become a professional athlete, then you, you <laughs> these these things are, are even more important. Yeah, they do help massively. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and and your your, your main sponsor, of course, Maggie. <laughs> yeah, God, I don't know how she put with me. <laughs> At a time, I've had to invest to you know for UTS and you know most weekends I'm, I'm just out on my own. Especially Saturday, um, we get to see each other during the week. I mean, I think I think if I think if she did see me, if I didn't go off on the Saturday and do my own thing, I think she'd probably be sick of me. So it's probably a good thing. But yeah, she's she really does um, she really does put up, put up with me. But she knows I love it, and she knows that if I didn't do what I love, then it wouldn't be me. And okay. It wouldn't exactly. Be. Vice versa, you know, she she's the same as me. She loves it, and I let her do her own thing and. Yeah. You've got to do it. Yeah. So actually, yeah, what, one other question I almost missed. Um, have you submitted this to, I, I know the, the record for this is listed on the Bob Graham Club website. Yeah, so I think it will come in due course. I mean, everything everything's done through Martin Stone. Yeah. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I, I did speak to Martin and I asked him, I said, you know, I said, who do I speak to about ratifying it? You know, and they're verifying and he said it will be on the <clears throat> GoFar website, okay. the Bob Graham Twenty Four Hour Club, um, in due in due court, in due time. So I have had a look; it's not on yet. But yeah, um, I've, I've it open right now because I was checking the previous records yeah, and things. I but, this morning, and it's not been put on yet. But I think it's just a case of when it's worthy of them going on and, and adding a couple of names on. They'll do it. Yeah, I mean, it, as you say, these these things do need to be ratified. Um, yeah. you know, we, we, we know each other. Um, I was tracking you all the way around it. I know, you, I know you've done. I've seen the hundred or so pictures that you've put up on uh, on Facebook yeah. and Instagram and stuff. So um, <laughs> I, I'm pretty convinced. But it, it's it's only right that uh, that people take oh, time course, yeah. to ratify things. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah, I look forward to seeing that. But I'll rather, and uh, you know, that's if yeah. you happen. Other than it, then it definitely happened. No, that's it. It's 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 on Strava. <laughs> what, what more needs saying, really? <laughs> yeah. Do you know there's one thing on open track on the on the tracker? It looked like I um I went over, but there's a discrepancy in that definitely. Uh, Mar I think Martin kind of made a did something himself when I set off at nine, right. because he, he knew before I gave him my reading off my watch that I beat it by seventeen minutes. So for Martin to have worked that out, yeah, uh, he obviously had some some sort of something in place to yes to verify it. If you know what I mean? Yeah, I, th I think one of the things that's difficult um, with something like this versus a race is the start and time, the, the the tracker and your watch. You know, when you when you actually start, because the the people controlling the tracker aren't there with you at the start. And so the, the start time can be a bit out, but then can be fixed retrospectively. It's, it's on like a proper 
litre metre, the tracker kicks in when you leave Moot Hall. So I might have already been a, a minute away from Moot Hall before it kicked in. Yeah, the yeah. same place, it, it, it kind of stops when you get back in a proximity. Yes. Yeah, that, 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 that's what I mean. Um, so yeah, these... Be, be, but that's yeah. That's why things get get verified, and that's why you have your your tracker and your watch, and just obviously all your uh, all your paces, watches, and everything's there to back up. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and, and check out any discrepancy. But, yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, cool. That's uh, all, awesome effort and great story, and yeah, I I, I really like the uh, the the fact that you. You took those moments to appreciate um, yeah. being out in the bells in the middle of it all. You got to do. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Any any last message, Howard, before we uh, finish up? Um, no, I think that's pretty much it. Pretty much it. I am feeling. Any oh, advice for somebody thinking about doing it? Uh, yeah, of course. Obviously, st maybe start in May, a bit early on in the year. <laughs> and start earlier on in the morning so you're not doing two full nights out. I'd, I'd say I'd go for a 3 to 4 a.m. start. Yeah. Um, and I maybe maybe if you wanted to be, but it's not the traditional way. Start at Moot Hall, I'd say, and do, the, do it the traditional way. But if you start in another location, I don't quite understand it, so the way somebody explained it to me, but you can, if you start, if you start somewhere else, you can cut out a huge hill, like, which an unnecessary climb, basically. Right. You can cut out a bit of a scent, which is yeah. not necessary, but, but I, I did it in not knowing. Yeah, but as you say, um, I th but anybody wants I think any help. Is, yeah, sticking with traditions is, is generally the, the done thing with, the, with these things, isn't it? But certainly, uh, yeah, the, the, the timing sounds like a, a, a good plan. You can go anti clockwise as well, but the traditional way is the Steve Power way clockwise, start, finish, move all. And I'd be happy to give anybody um, any advice if they want to message me or, or happy to support them, you know, if they want to have a go. Cool. Maybe in a few years' time, Howard. You can yeah, yeah. <laughs> I highly recommend it. It's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I need to uh, to get a bit more used to the ascent before I can do something like that. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, congratulations again for for breaking the, the Lakeland 2500s record in uh, 42 hours, 37 minutes and 15 seconds. Brilliant. Thank you. Cheers.